coming up on Aging Matters. Every individual wants to live a good, long, quality life. I realized being 82 what the real things in life are. It's people, it's loving, it's giving, and it's serving. I'm in that portion of my life is that, ah, oh, this is why I'm here. In general, quality of life increases with age, with two important provisos, and that is number one, that you don't get sick, and number two, that you retain your cognitive abilities. There's a very close connection between health status and quality of life. In fact, research shows that people don't consider themselves as old until their health starts to fail, whatever age that is. We are all aging. That's inevitable. The difficult thing is to learn what to accept and what you can change or what you can make better. There's more to it than just seeing your doctor and taking your pills. To me, I mean, the essence of what it means to age successfully is to identify it as being a life stage in and of itself, that it's not an extension of midlife and it's not a wasteland. It is as vital a life stage as every life stage that we've passed through to this point. I would like to have the idea that life continues to open up for me to the very end, and that if certain doors close, other doors open. Major funding for NPT Reports Aging Matters is provided by Cigna HealthSpring, lead sponsor of NPT Reports Aging Matters. The West End Home Foundation, support in the care of seniors through many organizations in Middle Tennessee. The HCA Foundation, on behalf of TriStar Health. The Jeanette Travis Foundation, dedicated to improving the health and well-being of the Middle Tennessee community. Additional funding provided by the Community Foundation of Middle Tennessee and by members of NPT. Thank you. What can we expect from the aging experience in our bodies, our minds, and our culture? Hi, I'm Kathy Matea, and on this edition of Aging Matters, we'll explore the pursuit of health and well-being as we age. The things that matter in life when we are age 65, 95, or 25 aren't that different. Community, meaningful relationships, and a sense of purpose. But will our health hold us back as we age? The realities are that two-thirds of Medicare beneficiaries live with more than one chronic disease. For some, healthy aging may mean not letting illness and injury interfere with what matters most. For others, prevention may be the key to maintaining a high quality of life. As we age, our definition of health might change. There are many pills and products that claim to defy age, but is that healthy? What can we do to achieve the quality of life we want? And what does the evidence say? I hope you'll join us as we explore these questions and more on Aging Matters Healthy Aging. Stay tuned. When I get up in the morning and you're on your way to a run, it is one of the most peaceful times in my day. The sun is just coming up, there's mist across the valley, and you are at such peace. It's almost a spiritual thing, it just, it's very calming. To be perfectly honest with you, I don't really enjoy the actual act of running all that much. It's very painful, but I like the benefits of what I get from running, and that has changed my life dramatically.
At age 64, David Schmansky has always lived a physically active lifestyle, but he didn't start running until four years ago. I've never been healthier than I have these last four years. My whole attitude, it's not only a physical thing, it's a mental thing. Every minute that I'm alive on this planet, I feel what a gift that I have today. And I've got very young children. I don't want to be ever a burden on them. So by taking care of yourself now, you're going to be able to enjoy them. Health isn't Schmansky's only motivation. He's also racing against the clock. David Schmansky competes in his age group against the fastest runners in the world and wins. Along with his teammates, he holds a world record for the men's 4x800 meter relay. But there are days when he pays for pushing his body to the limit. I have had a rude awakening on pains and muscle pulls and injuries, muscle groups that I didn't know I had. But all those injuries set aside, they pale in comparison to the health benefits, the ability to run and play football with my two sons in a field. You know, I look in the mirror and I see this aging man and I want to erase the image and say, there's a 16 year old behind that, but this old guy's in the way. I'm still this young person. <laughs> we all think we're a lot younger. My motivation for running is a, it's like a moving target. When I first started running, it was completely an individual sport. Go Bean, go Bean! As I got more and more involved, the most truly deep and long-term benefits are friendship and relationships that you get with other athletes. People that you can call on in a time of need. I wouldn't exchange that for a lifetime. 10,000 baby boomers turn 65 every day in the U.S. Many older Americans enjoy better health and a higher quality of life than previous generations. But that may not be true for all baby boomers. The boomers as a whole had the benefit of higher education, more resources, and are often in a better health status. Unfortunately, there are some people in the baby boom generation, particularly those who are kind of the tail end of it, who are suffering from the obesity epidemic. And there are data suggesting they have more in the way of disability than had been the case previously. So it's not clear. Front end of the boomers, maybe they're a little bit healthier. Back end of the boomers, maybe not as healthy as you would like. Healthy aging is a balancing act because if we all live long enough, then we're going to develop some medical conditions and other things that may not work as well as they once did. My job as a primary care physician and, and mostly as a geriatrician is to have discussions with, with patients about where they are at this particular point in time. I think the most healthy people I meet are those that are content and are able to adapt and adjust to whatever their limitations are. You have no complaints from me. As people age, lifestyle choices catch up, the odds in the genetic lottery play out, and the consequences of an unhealthy environment take their toll. Three out of four Americans over the age of 55 live with at least one chronic condition. When I was young, I was extremely active. Middle age, a job, focus on the job. You spend that time at work, you don't factor in physical activity. It's always fast food around you. Someone's always bringing donuts to work, and I used to be guilty of that myself. I'd always bring in the wrong kind of food to work for people to enjoy, because I enjoyed it. But when you get in the plus 60 club, things change. You start having some ailments, uh, some arthritis, some blood pressure problems, some sugar problems, and all of those kinds of issues that seem to surface. Compared to the rest of the country, Tennessee seniors are at a disadvantage when it comes to physical health and nutrition. Tennessee seniors rank 44th in overall health, 48th in physical activity. One in five seniors struggles with hunger. Nearly one in three is obese. The challenge for both the patient and the doctor is that older adults don't have just one disease. You have high blood pressure, diabetes, a little bit of heart failure, and for each one of those indications, three different pills that you should be taking. 
It's been said in the past that if you're on 10 different medications, you have virtually 100% likelihood of some sort of drug-drug or drug-nutrient interaction that can be really very harmful. I think that as we age, we begin to add medicines and nothing's really taken away. A patient with heart failure may be taking five different medicines just for their heart failure. And then you add some diabetes into that and that may be another two or three meds. Then you may say, well, they get a little dizzy, they have a little vertigo, so we will add a med for that. They've got a little bit of arthritis, so we'll add some meds for that. Suddenly we've got 15 or 20 meds and maybe our patient is taking so many medicines they don't even want to eat anymore. When we see patients that come into the office that may be taking multiple medications, it's not at all uncommon to have some sort of complaint or potential adverse event that may be a direct result of that medication. You can have falls, fractures, sleepiness, dizziness. You can even have cognition issues in regards to certain over-the-counter medicines, not even necessarily prescription medicines. My philosophy as an internist and as a geriatrician is the least amount of medicine for the shortest period of time because they all have trade-offs and side effects. And everything we do in practicing and prescribing medications is risk versus benefit. So if we can get to goal without a medication, I think that's win-win for the patient. A lot of what you're like when you're 70 or 80 is related to choices you made when you were a teenager or a young adult or a middle-aged adult. That doesn't mean that there's no chance for you to enhance your health if you've not had good habits up until age 65 or so. There's more to it than just seeing your doctor and taking your pills. I've learned the hard way. Medications help and they are needed, but the ultimate goal is to get off of medication and really change your lifestyle and hopefully correct the condition. It's a change and I can only recall of one person that likes change and that's a wet baby. All the rest of us don't like change, but change is important and you must change when you get in that plus 60 club because I want to live a long time, but I want the quality of life to be good to where I enjoy. <laughs> Those changes have helped my overall health. And all you have to do is look at the numbers. Blood pressure is lower. Blood sugar is lower. And all of those things make a difference in the long run. We need to broaden the way we look at health. It may be that someone is very physically healthy, maybe their nutrition is good, but they don't have those friendships and social connections that are also very important for longevity and positive aging. Janet Jernigan spends her time balancing life on a farm with her family and managing 50 Forward, an organization serving more than 20,000 individuals in Middle Tennessee. There's a real need for health and wellness at any level that a person might be functioning. I think one thing that 50 Forward really excels in is really being able to take each person where they are and to be able to help them take stock of their life in general in all the various areas, you know, the physical fitness, the social and recreational, the lifelong learning, the contributing back to the community. And looking at those things and coming up with a plan as to how that person can broaden the scope of what they do and overall um, enhance their quality of life and certainly improve their health in the process. The research shows that people who are very active and involved in the community on average live much longer than people who don't. In fact, there was one study done several years ago that said the single best predictor of longevity in men is whether or not they volunteer. We moved to Nashville in May of 2006. Coming here, I didn't have anything to do. At home, I began to feel my age. I discovered that my powers had diminished. I could not do the things I used to do with the ease in which I did it. I found myself becoming cantankerous. I found myself doing things only very perfunctorily. 
There was no goal. It was just a day and I existed. I was 79 and all I saw was a tombstone. And I said, oh God, is this all there is? There are four across and three. In 2012, Richard Parker found his way to the foster grandparent program at 50 Forward, which pairs older adults with younger students. How did I know that I was drawn to children? I wasn't. I did it. I didn't think about children. I had four. They had grown up. I said, thank you, Jesus. I got there and the kids were drawn to me. I think they are the most beautiful young things in the world. I love being with them. I love talking to them. I love doing everything I can for them. So it was just a fit, nothing I had ever planned. Richard Parker volunteers five hours a day, four days a week. According to him, it's a selfish act. When I started, it gave me motivation, it gave me zest, it gave me zip, it made me smile, it made me likable again, it fulfilled my needs, and it really allows me to know that I have something to give that's appreciated. I was asked to read to my fourth grade class, and after I finished reading to them, they clapped. What do you think that does for a person? And here out of these young people have I found myself. That's where I am in my journey. I'm in that portion of my life is that, ah, oh, this is why I'm here. It's great. How about some tea? Sounds good. <laughs> Thank you. What you gonna play? To me, I mean, the essence of what it means to age successfully is to identify it as being a life stage in and of itself, that it's not an extension of midlife and it's not a wasteland. It is as vital a life stage as every life stage that we've passed through to this point. For Carol Orsborn, aging provides an opportunity to embark on a new journey, a journey which the baby boomer generation is poised to explore. The boomer generation is very interesting. Many of us were very active for many years, challenging the norms. And uh, there was a, always a spiritual component because I think underneath it all, we were looking for a way to make meaning in our lives. And this is only accelerated with age. So, you know, when you're 20 and you think you're gonna live forever, it's not the same as when you're 70 or 80. You, you deepen in life and it, it changes how you value the present moment and your relationships and what you're trying to leave as your legacy. All those kinds of things deepen and change, but only if you start asking the bigger questions. For many years, Orsborn worked as a marketer. She witnessed firsthand a change in how boomers were branded as they aged. We were always the apple of the marketer's eye. And I was completely taken aback when I started hitting 50s and 60s and realized that they had taken their eye off of us as the demographic du jour and were continuing to look at young people as we were aging. We were starting to disappear. When marketers realized there was money to be made in the growing demographic of older Americans, it was from one perspective. All we had was an anti-aging market, which is a multi-billion dollar industry. You know, whether it's cosmetics or clothes that look just like your daughter's clothes. When they picture us, we're always uh, climbing a mountain or doing some impossible yoga pose or running a marathon. Unless we are busy and productive all of the time, we aren't aging successfully. Now, the problem with that, if you can be active and if you want to be productive, great. But there's many of us that would like to explore what aging may offer on its own terms. Some of the happiest people that I see aging are people that may not have a lot and may not even be well known anymore or even have a whole lot of friends, but they've come to understand the difference between loneliness and solitude. And they understand what it 
feels like and the joy there can be in sitting by a river, spending time with a friend, having a lovely cup of yogurt, whatever. I mean, just really sucking the juice out of whatever there is there. Healthy aging really, to me, it comes back to three words, being engaged in life. Uh, you know, if you're engaged in life, many of the other things fall into place. Depression is supposed to be the second leading cause of premature death by the year 2020, and the number one cause by 2050. Yeah. The main thing is keeping our abilities so that we can work, we can enjoy time with our family, we can uh, do all the things that we have promised ourselves that we would do as we get older. When I talk to people who are older, my first question is, what do you do all day? How do you, how do you organize your life? How much time do you spend walking? Where do you go? I think the things that make life meaningful and rich for an 80-year-old are the same things that make life meaningful and rich for a 25-year-old, which is interaction, some degree of challenge, connection with other people, and some idea of relaxation, play, enjoyment. We want to welcome you to the Middle Tennessee semi-final Brain Games. We just arrived here from Ashland City, Tennessee, and we are here because we won the district competition in Murfreesboro last month. What does the B stand for in scuba diving? Mary Sneed and her team, the Ashland City Acers, are competing in the semifinals of the Tennessee State Brain Games. If they win these games, the Acers will go on to the state finals, where they will compete to win $1,000 for their senior center, a trophy, and of course, bragging rights. 30 seconds remaining. We've done quite a bit of preparation. We've done a lot of trivia. There are umpteen thousand trivia sites on the internet that we all go on and we get together a couple of times a week. My interest is obviously in keeping my brain working. It's this short-term memory that really gets you. It's a scary kind of thing the older you get not to be able to remember like you used to. You can remember a long time ago but yesterday is pretty much a blank slate. <laughs> Ashland City Acers are a legion for the Middle Tennessee Brain Games. We thought we were going to win, and we did. <laughs> it was like, wow, it happened. In thinking about going to the state next month, it's quite a bit scarier. It's bigger, it's better competition, and it's the end. But it's also, it's representing our senior center that is really important to all of us. According to AARP, cognitive decline ranks among the leading concerns of aging Americans. But like many other aspects of healthy aging, knowing what works to promote brain health and what doesn't can be hard to figure out. Clearly there's a huge industry out there that is looking at, here's a brain game for you. If you do this three times a week, you will forestall memory decline in the future. Maybe yes, maybe no. We think that mental activity, staying intellectually sharp, intellectually active, is good for the brain. I think it probably is, but it's a little bit more difficult to demonstrate that. As it turns out, the same lifestyle choices that are good for your body are probably good for your brain. Physical exercise is probably the single best lifestyle activity in which we can engage to preserve cognitive function. A study out, out of Australia a couple of years ago showed that brisk walking, 30 minutes five times, 50 minutes three times a week, can in fact forestall cognitive changes with aging. Whether brain games on their own prevent cognitive decline is not certain, but according to the Tennessee Commission on Aging and Disability, that's okay. The games still serve their purpose. We're gonna keep doing this because it brings people together, brings them to the senior center or senior organizations. You know, it's socialization, it's participation, it's engagement. People need to be active and engaged and utilize their mind and go out and exercise. That's what it's about. Go Ashland Acers! Go! Yay! I'm really excited to be here in Morristown. I've never been here before and it's the state finals in the senior games. Welcome y'all. Thank you. They're the four top teams in the whole state. It's a great honor, but we're a little nervous too. <laughs> Welcome to the 2015 Senior Brain Games. The whole system of putting on this Brain Games has worked well for all of us, I think. 
Round one, question one. The Brain Games have brought a group of people together that we were not particularly friends before, but we have developed an incredible respect for one another's brains. And the fact that my brain retains certain things like entertainment and music, Sandy's is war and generals and movies, and Linda is general knowledge, and so we all bring something to the table. The only state that has a capital city beginning with the letter F. We all looked at each other after the first couple of questions and said, this is gonna be a challenge. Second place was Ashland City Acers, yeah. and 114 points, the Morristown Senior Gamers. At the end of the games, we came in second in the state, and we are just elated. So to me, that is just the best we could possibly have done, unless we won, of course. And there's always next year. I would say to anyone, get up, find the niche God has for you, get in it, get with it, and it's going to make you feel good. It's never too late to exercise. I would tell anyone that if you're not exercising, and that might mean just walking a little bit every day, you're really shortening your life. As you age, there's no reason that you can't continue to grow. It is very rewarding to me to be able to see the progress people make, to see the reward that they get from making changes in their life. And many times it starts with a very simple thing and just goes from there. It's never too early or too late to try and live a healthy, balanced lifestyle. It's up to us as individuals, families, and a society to create the kind of community where healthy living is accessible for everyone and aging is valued as an important part of life. There may not be a quick or easy solution, but you are worth the investment. I hope you'll take time to explore all of MPT's Aging Matters series at wnpt.org slash aging matters. Thanks. Major funding for NPT Reports Aging Matters is provided by Cigna HealthSpring, lead sponsor of NPT Reports Aging Matters. The West End Home Foundation, support in the care of seniors through many organizations in Middle Tennessee. The HCA Foundation, on behalf of TriStar Health, the Jeanette Travis Foundation, dedicated to improving the health and well-being of the Middle Tennessee community. Additional funding provided by the Community Foundation of Middle Tennessee and by members of NPT. Thank you.